the information era. And right now, that's to say that, okay, thank you very much for the comment. I really appreciate it. That's to tell you that people change as we, as we move. In the agreement period, there was no such thing as white collar job. Is that not true? There was no such thing as white collar job. In the industrial revolution, then we now started talking about looking for jobs, factory setting, et cetera, et cetera. In the information age, you look at explosion of digitalization of all processes. You see that? So that tells you that even the people that you're training, they are changing. Their characteristics are changing. Society, the world view of so many things are changing. That tells you that if you insist on how things were done in the 60s and in the 70s, they're just going to remain there. You're not going to have a lot of influence. Tools for innovation, technologies and systems all over the place. 5D, 4D, 4D, like many things are expanding. So we cannot stay where we used to be. And then, of course, you know, high schools and supportive, all of this is just tells you that as we move across seasons, as we move across generations, the way people see life, the way people approach things, they differ. Today, we talk about modernized agriculture. I hope you know that mechanized farming. It is still farming, but what has happened? Innovation, technological evolution, explosion as a matter of fact. So that is to let us know that innovation and education, we can't remove it. And like I mentioned to us, education is not the only thing that you learn in school. The formal school system is a part of education, is a kind of education. It is not all that there is when it comes to educating a person or a people. Next slide. Yes, relationship between education and innovation. I've already explained how that education nurtures innovation. And then of course, increase efficiency, effectiveness. You see, um, if I wanted to teach without using, with it's more for online, you know, I can only be in one place at a time. I hope you know that. And what that simply means is that I can only talk to the people who are in that location at times. But with innovation, especially digitalization, I can connect to people at people in different places at the same time. And I'm aware that on this call, we have people from Nigeria, USA, Cameroon, Ghana, etc. So that tells you that I can do more when it comes to educating people, thanks to innovation. Now, increase efficiency. Yes. Now, if not for innovation, and thankfully, my ability to create my slides, I would have had to write all my points on the board. So instead of the technical team sharing my slides, I would have had to write, do you know how many hours it would have taken me to write all the things that we've shared so far? Can you just guess? Imagine everything that we have been sharing, you know, it's so simple. You just use your finger to swipe it and it goes to the next slide. Minus innovation, I would have had to write every single thing on a board. Do you know how many hours it would have taken me? So instead of having this, presentation for, I don't know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, we would have had to have this presentation for nothing less than two hours. And I can assure you people will be exhausted by the end of the day. And of course, people will not learn much because, you know, in psychology, there's something, oh, some of you don't know that I even have a first class in psychology. <laughs> yes, I do. I have a first class in BSC psychology. We talk about the mind-body relationship. If the body is in a state of distress, the mind cannot assimilate. So there is a strong relationship between your mind or your brain and your body, the brain-body relationship. If you are in a place and it is too hot or it is too cold or you are not comfortable, your body is in a state of distress. Your mind cannot assimilate. You see that? So imagine you have had to, you would have had to write every single thing. Even the person talking to you will be exhausted because now I would have had to stand. Is that not true? And then I would have had to then, and then I would have to start writing. Oh my God. Reduce efficiency. Now, increase access. Did you know that with innovation, you can access not just tens, not just hundreds, millions of online resources? I can connect a professor in the US and they would open their e library to me, and I'm going to have access to thousands, and I mean hundreds of thousands of publications. 
increased access. I don't have to travel down to the United States if I don't want to. I don't have to travel down to the UK if I don't want to. I don't have to go to Ghana if I don't want to. All I just need to do is to contact them and they will give me their open online access. And here I am devouring, consuming their resources. Now, digital storage system. Gone are the days of opening files upon files upon files upon files. Today, what do we do? Our resources, we store them online, cloud. And you know what? It is safe. But the things that you store manually, there could be a breakdown of the system. There could be a collapse of the system. There could be anything, natural disaster, flood, erosion, and then you will lose material. But you see, innovation ensures that we have a digital storage system where our resources are safe and they can last longer for us. Now, digitalized administration. How many of us still remember the days where if you want to register for something, imagine we wanted to register for this training. Let us assume that this training was a ticketed training. And we decided, okay, so people are going to register and there is no innovation. We would have had to go to the venue, right? Pay in cash. Then the right receipt would have had a long queue of people. <laughs> we would have had a long queue of people. Again, time wasting or if you like, since it is important, so let's not say time wasting, time consuming, people will burn out. So innovation, education, they help. Now, bringing innovation and education to business. Now, some of you would say education and business. I thought people do that business don't go to school. <laughs> you are wrong. I already mentioned that education is a success that leads to the total transformation of a person. Bringing it to business. Every single thing that you need to move your business from the level of idea to the level of product delivery or service delivery is your education. I'll take it again. As a business person, whatever knowledge, whatever skills, whatever tools, whatever experience, exposure, relationship, mentorship that you need to move your business from the state of conceptualization, idea, to the place of product delivery or service delivery, substance, that is your education. So what does that tell us? The education that you need is quite different from the education that the other person needs. Education is not the same 100% for everybody. It is not the one should fit all sides. No, it is different for different people. What you need and what I need is quite different when it comes to education. And this is one of the things that the school system doesn't do so well. They bring everybody together and they force it down your school. And if you check my previous slide, we talked about personalized learning, individualized learning where everybody is an individual. If you're a fashionista, whatever you need to connect to your client and build your brand is your education. So for some of you, the education that you need is not in the school system. Do you understand? <laughs> the education that you need is not in the school system. The school system parallels something, literacy and numeracy. Everybody needs that at the basic level. The ability to read and write and communicate effectively. Speaking, reading, listening, and writing. Everybody did that. Now, aside that, the next thing you need is the education that helps you to achieve your goals. <laughs> Whatever you want to do with your life, what you need to move it from the place of goal, idea, to reality is your education. So I want you to expand your mind when you get education. It doesn't mean pack your bag and go to a formal school system, learn, write exams, and get certificated. You don't need that. Did you know that the apprenticeship system is also education? semi-formal education. In fact, it is one of the most strongest form of education because you get to learn directly from your mentor. As an apprentice, you are a disciple. The person that is teaching you is your mentor. You learn from them back to back, practically, well, in the Igbo system for like six years, then you do your graduation or your freedom, then you start your own. It's one of the strongest system of learning because you get to apply all the psychological tools that you're not even aware of, number one, behaviorism. In behaviorism, we say that all of man ab man's behavior is operant in nature. What does that mean? It is guided by reward and punishment. So we talk about social learning. Imitation, you watch your boss do it and you do it. The way your boss used to talk to the customer, the way your boss used to negotiate, the way your boss used to close deal. Imitation, learning by watching. Do you know that is the way children learn? That is the way they learn. It's one of the strongest ways to learn. So there's a lot of things that the formal system of education does not tell us, but it's very, very strong. You know, people used to say that um, 
here in Africa, we have a way with our men. One of the ways we learn in Africa is informal, and then semi formal. So, education is something that everybody needs, but everybody needs different kind of education. Does that make any sense to us? Because sometimes when you tell people you need education, they think what you mean is go to school. No, that's not what we mean. I am an educational consultant. I am a project manager. I have project management professional, human resource management professional, and I'm an associate member of International Institute of Project Managers, Project Management, also an associate member of Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management. So I understand formal education, but I also understand that that is not all there is. So when you tell people you need education, they think what you mean is go to school. No, that's not what we mean. We mean you need to become a refined person. You need to become a better version of yourself. You need to gather the knowledge, the skills, the tools, the mentorship, the people, the experience that you need to achieve your goals. That is education. You need to move your ideas to a place of actualization. So it is from conceptualization to actualization. That is education. Do we understand? So if you want to become a nurse, yes, you need a diploma school system. Okay. Now, if you want to build certain things, you don't necessarily need a diploma school system. If you check some of the innovators and the inventors, they didn't necessarily learn their school from the school system. So for some of us parents, you need to expand your mind. Some of the things that your children need, sometimes it's not in the school system. And some of you, you know, you're so close-minded. Now, why am I telling you some of the things, these things about me? It's because I don't want you to think, well, she didn't really, really go to school. That is why she's not a very school person. I am very, very school. I have TRCN certificates, Teachers Education Council of Nigeria. I'm a professionally certified teacher. I have too many MBAs. I have BSc. I've done many, many trainings in business schools in and out of Nigeria, US, everywhere. So I have formal education. And I'm telling you, that is not all there is. Your education is that experience put together, that exposure that helps you to move your life from conceptualization to actualization. Every single thing that you want to do from the point of, I want to do it to the point of, I have already done it. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? That's what education is for you. Yeah, thank you very much. So next slide, please. <laughs> We can talk all day about education. Next slide. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate the time that I spent with you. I, I know that I'm constrained with time. I don't have all the time in the world. So, and I don't want Coach Julia to tell me time off. <laughs> but we can talk all day about education. So yes, if you have any yes, questions, yes. I'll be happy to see them. Thank you. Amazing. And I see the chat popping up with so many persons affirming everything that you are saying. Thank you so much for doing so much justice to that delivery. Um, I am so grateful it came um, at this time because that is what we are about. You know, it's, it's about educating, um, it's about educating the globe, educating the world, adding value to everyone that, as best as we can. So when we're talking about education today, it's just, it just aligns with everything that we are. Thank you so much. I see the love in the chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's, let's, uh, let's take a bit, uh, a bit of questions before we move to, um, to the next session. Yeah. Let's have your questions. Um, Julia is open. Juliet is open to. To answering them. And he says, I, I respect your facility of knowledge. Touching every angle simplifies it more. Thank you so much, Annie. Uh, Jay says, whatever knowledge, tools, or mentorship you need to move your business and values to the next level is dependent on your education. Yes. And that education begins with your open-mindedness to learning. Okay, I see inspiration from Linda. I see your hands up. 
Linda, you can unmute and ask your question. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Could you like? Hello. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I actually came late. I've been in and out of the program. And um, the little I got to know and um, the way you break it down is amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's, I wish other people need to be on the platform to know the true definition of education. Like in our system in Nigeria, I guess you are from Nigeria, right? We have um, issues with education. And like yesterday, I was watching a parenting um, program, which a lot of parents don't know what is going on in the world, because you did mention something about that. People focus on go to school, go to school, go to school. We forgot that in this age now, what we are facing, what our children will face in the future is different for what we have, is different for our personal challenge, because now you have to you have to be vast in knowledge you have to you have to fit into any place you find yourself that is what will build the future because we are just sharing the future now so many so many people don't understand what you are telling them now in the next 15 years they will know the level you are coming from because we need to expand the knowledge of our young one to let them know that the school certificate is just the certification stuff for your talent, because the Bible said your talent will make a way for you. So the talent, your skills is what you need to fit any environment you find yourself. How do I produce in this environment? So I didn't really, you know, start with you, but I was able to grab some. So what I'm trying to share with you, because it's something that I know, and uh, you just put it on the table, like putting it where there are things you know, there are things you see trendy, but confirmation, this was a deep confirmation for, for me. And then to also like, Put more emphasis on parents. Parents, exactly. this is for parents. Because yeah. we don't know everybody's school, school, school. If you don't go to this school, if you don't go to London, if you don't do this, there is more to education than the school okay. thing. So I, I just said I should just, you know, add with what you are saying. And I want you to also find a platform for parents mm -hmm. to know more about this. It's for the future. Yeah, I actually do. You know, one of the things that, you know, when we talk about education, like I said, people think go to school. There's an aspect of education that a lot of parents don't even touch sex education. I have uh, a certificate from International Institute of Clinical Sexology, UX, on sexual disorder and discussion. Now, for all the certificates I've been telling some of you, so you have an opinion about me. I'm an under 30. <laughs> I'm not your 30. <laughs> so I used to say I'm an under 30 CEO. <laughs> okay. I'm under 30. Yes. I'm not your 30. Because people are like, hmm? what is the certificate? How old are you now? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, thank God. <laughs> yes. Mm. Now, it's sex education. The first time I mentioned sex education to a particular parent, she was like, why do you want to start sex education? I said, Madam, look, there's something we call sexual bullying, sexual harassment. Your children don't know how to handle it. A lot of people don't even know how to do it. There's something we call safe distance, setting boundaries, especially for members of the opposite sex. That is sex education. You see, when you tell people sex education, they mean they think you mean in fact in and out. Mm -hmm. That is an aspect of sex education. So what another aspect of sex education is sexuality education, understanding your body parts and how they have been wired to function. A lot of people don't know this. So there's a training that I do yes for parents. It is teach your child sex education. A lot of parents are uncomfortable and I understand. In their own generation, their mother did not quite talk about it. The school was silent about it. And the church many times doesn't want to talk about it. We all know, don't we? <laughs> now, parents need to learn how to teach their children sex education. So I think that you should come for the program. Another parent too, learn how to teach your children sex education. There was, uh, I did a sex education training for them in church. Oh, I'm a Christian sex educator. Christian, yes. So I asked them, who created your penis? You were uncomfortable. <laughs> I said, it's God. Who created your vagina? 
they were like, ah, what kind of question is this? In church, I said, yes, who created it? God. And I said, now, the manufacturer of anything knows the best way to use it. True or false? They said, yes. I said, now, the person that created your penis mm -hmm. and your vagina said, use it only in marriage. What do you think? Mm -hmm. They were like, yeah, yes, it's true, it's true, it's true. But when I said, who created the penis? They want to talk. But if I had said, who created it? They would have said, God, is your body not part of you? You see that? So parents need to learn how to teach their children sex education. And yes, I also do consultation for children, especially secondary school and university children. There's a program that I do is career, career and career and academic development program. Do you know that many of the people that go to the university? Yeah, okay, they don't know Julia, Julia. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. oh my God. Yeah, we are go time constrained. We are time constrained. I'm sorry. Thank you so, so much, sorry. beautiful Linda, for, um, for giving us more insight and then shooting us. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Somebody let's hear from Annie. Yeah. Somebody is Tony. Tony, Annie. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Sorry. Tony. On mute. Is on mute. Is it or a question? Okay. Is it a question? Okay. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, Miss Juliet. Uh, Thank you for that insight. The exposure was great, actually. Although I joined exactly the time you are entering your own path. But the part okay. I really want to understand very well, because days back, I took to my Facebook channel. I was telling the young ones that they should try as much as possible to have uh, skills, to acquire skills as much as they can, they can and they can afford before graduating. Because it's not funny out there. That was exactly how I put it. And there was a lot of reactions. And my question is, the time you are talking about conceptualization to actualization, thinking about it and then getting it uh, in place, uh, I want to understand very well because the Nigerian system of education particularly, I'm sorry if it's prohibited to like talk about a particular country here. The Nigerian <laughs> system of education, when it comes to the way they teach us, just like Malinda said, they, they are all about, uh, you are studying, for example, my course is parastology and entomology. And I tell you, it was when I graduated that I discovered that there are more to this than what I have just acquired. Uh, hey, first of all, we are not licensed to work in the lab, but over there, they will tell you, you have the opportunity in the lab. It was during graduation that I saw the Shege in it. Uh, currently, now I'm teaching in a, in a secondary school that is undergoing my NYSE program. So I want you to, like, when you are talking about education, like doing this and doing the other one, does it include that somebody, maybe you are in school now, you are learning how to do something, what they call art, I don't know whether they call them artisans or artistic something, something. You are learning mm -hmm. how to, is that part of education from what you said? Because I would like to share this with some group of persons. That's Most one. <laughs> then there is another one they said is GS, General School of General Sorry. Studies, whereby you do all this entrepreneurship. <laughs> Sorry, let okay. me take the first one. I don't want to forget any of your questions. If you're okay. learning artisan, people that work with their hands, is it education? Okay. Yes. I already mentioned to you that even in the school, they will teach you that they are dealing with the ways of learning. Yeah. The head, cognitive, the heart, affective, and the hand, psychomotor. Those are the domains of education. And that yeah. forms the basis for formal, semi-formal, and informal education. And if you listen to me, I mentioned that the apprenticeship system is a strong system for education. In fact, it's one of the strongest. You know why? You get to learn practically on the job. Now, for those of you that did a little bit of HR, you know that we have industry training. That's the training yeah. that they give you when you come to an organization. They help you to get acquainted with the organization, the culture, the policy, the politics. Yes, the expectations, etc. Now, there's something we call off-the-job training. You are moved away from your office to go learn somewhere else. Now, there's something we call on-the-job training. It's one of the strongest ways to learn. Why? Because you're practicing as you're learning. And it can allow, it even allows you to retain more because whatever it is that you're getting, you are putting it on the job almost immediately. One of the, uh, one of the um, weaknesses so to say, of, of the job training is that you can forget some of the things that you've learned. And practicalizing it on the job can be a little bit difficult, but on the job training is very, very strong. And that is one of the things that apprenticeship system allows you on the job training. And you are learning practically from your boss. You watch the way your boss interacts with customers. You watch the way your boss produces. The way your boss markets. The way your boss negotiates. Do you know that? You know, I said I have a first class in psychology. Business people are one of the strongest psychologists. One of the strongest, I tell you. Business people, they are one of the strongest psychologists. When it comes to human interaction, human understanding, 
business people are very strong psychologists. Now, they may not be psychologists by certification, by training, but by practice, they are psychologists. I'm telling you. Now, who is a psychologist? If you understand human and animal interaction, behavior, they are very strong with psychology. And if you're not careful, they will manipulate you. You know, they can trick you. They can fight you. The logic. I'm yeah. telling you. Now, I'm telling you. So I know it because I'm also a business person because I run my own business. Yes, I have my own consulting firm. We do educational consulting and all of that. So I'm telling you, business people are strong psychologists. Now, some of these people, they may not have the certification, but they have the education because they've learned and they practice it. You see, these market women, they are strong business people. If you speak English, you can confuse them. But if you speak their local dialect, you'll be confused. You'll be surprised. They are strong with accounting. They may not have studied debit and credit, but you know what? They will do business, they will buy, they will sell, and they will calculate their money and make their profit. They are strong accountants. So, you know, I read, when I studied education, so can, I studied can we, move, education. can we move to the second question, Juliet? <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. <laughs> Second question is so direct. What advice do you give to all this theoretical teaching? Although you have already talked about it, but the Nigerian mm. system of education, all this, they are, you do this, you do that. At the end of the day, all of them ends theoretically. No practice at all. For example, the current, what they call it currently is GS301. That is the entrepreneurship. There mm. you have to read about, basically about uh, business Business analysis and co, how to handle business, how to start up, okay. all this kind you know of what thing. I, what advice do you give to that? Um, first of all, let me tell you something. Now, you see, if you can learn in the school system, you can learn in many places. You know why? The school system forces you to be patient. Have you noticed that? It takes patience to learn in school. An impatient person cannot learn in school. So whatever they are teaching you in school, learn it, pass it. Like I passed well, I made the first class, pass very well. Do your certificate. <laughs> Look for who to learn the practical form. Now, some of the people that you meet in school, it's not really their fault. You know, I don't want to delve into government and governance, but some of your lecturers would have taught you better if they had equipment. I hope you know what I'm trying to say. You don't have to call the no. name. Yeah. Yes. If they had a well furnished laboratory, they would have done more practicals with you. And you see, as, and over the time, as they do slowly, 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 they tend to forget they are human beings. Okay? So it is a systemic problem. It is not just the fault of your lecturers. I'm also a product of the Nigerian student. I also have international education. It is not completely, it is not 100% their fault. If they had a better system, they would perform better. So don't blame them completely. <laughs> don't blame them completely. Thank so what you I'm saying, let your theory and then practice elsewhere. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, um, <laughs> Juliet. I know the fact that you're able to do so much justice to all the questions. I wish the time would have allowed us to explore so, so much. Um, yeah. Before we, we are supposed to have our breakout session, but I don't know how much time we have. Whilst technical, we'll decide on that. I will just take the question I see on the chat. I think that question came whilst we were moving to the, uh, to the present segment. Um, I think the question is, um, the reduction of price as a strategy affect the product or the affect the quality of the production. Now, this is, um, I hope that Dominica Stores is still here who asked the question. This is one of the reasons why uh, it is very important to have strategy. Because when you have the strategy, trust me, you will not be about uh, price reduction because you are very confident in in the value that you bring and you because you have understood <clears throat> because you have understood your 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 targeted market you would rather work at making your product compelling you would rather work at making your product compelling so for example, if you have done the testing and people can see the value of what you are giving to them, why would you put your product on sales? Most of the time products are on sales, that is with price reduction because uh, they, they are not able to make sales. You can plan, you have control over plan, but you don't have control over what customers are going to do. You cannot. That goes to the question about customer behavior. You cannot um, determine customer behavior, no. 
customer's reaction to your product. So the only thing you can do is to make your product compelling. And the only place you can do this is from the start, from the ground level in creating the strategy. How do I place myself? Where do I place myself? What is the best place for me to sell what I have? Where is the value I bring more, is going to be more appealing? From the beginning, I said that we had business strategy has evolved from the time when people would just uh, saying we have to reduce costs so that we can reduce price. So when they do that, they are of course going to reduce the quality. They are not, they don't care about customer. Okay. So now thinking about the customer, you place yourself, you give them what they want. You place yourself in a way that you are appealing enough to them that they would want to come and buy. So um, do all in the interview I had, I remember um, coach, the coach saying something that you go to a marketplace and then you see the jeans being hanged everywhere. Maybe they are selling it one five. That particular jean, you enter a particular shop, a particular boutique. They have AC on, they have, you know, so many lights and things. And then you see that gene, maybe for 5,000 or 50,000. In your mind, you're telling yourself you cannot even negotiate this. So how compelling is your strategy? Your, the, 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 the manner at which you are able to put that and have that in place, strategize yourself properly in the market. There is no need of reducing price. There is no need of altering your quality, the quality of your product. Um, Dominica Stores, I don't know if this has met you, if this has answered your question. I see that um, Udeme is also interested. Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. Sorry, I just want to be sure that my section is over. I want to be very sure. Is my section over? No, no, it is not. We would have a breakout session, so you could. You might want to explore with people that will be in your session. Ah, uh, so I I don't know. I, I didn't know that I was going to do a breakout session because it, I have. It's just a ten minutes. It's just for ten minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, I Jay, am I missing any question? Are we missing any question in the chat? No, no, not really. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll be we'll be right back. Um, okay. Technica, are you ready to take us away? Okay. Yeah. Um, the Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not sharing my screen. I'm trying to make sure that my network is as efficient. Okay, no, so we don't, really have, we don't have time for breakout session. It's three minutes to top of the hour. Yeah, so it's up to you to decide if we're going to do it. I think, I think, I think we should pause. Um, we should pause. We can, we can have it here. We can have yeah. it here. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, did you say there is no more breakout session? I'm sorry. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I um, we we'll just have it here, the breakout session. Let's, let's have it here. Uh, we'll just check open your up for, we will just open up for more questions. If there are more questions. Are there more questions? Okay. Um, while we are waiting to see if anybody has questions or sharing, if you have any sharing on any of the um, topics that have been talked on today, you can please um, you can please you can please put it in the chat or be ready to open your mic. Well, technical, let's see 
the ID Global Training Center. So we have heard about how important it is to get educated and, um, and we have also heard about the different kinds of learning. We have learned about the different kinds of learning. With the ILEAD Global Training Center, we don't just train, but we offer you the opportunity. We offer you the opportunity to, to, to practice as you learn. You practice as you learn. And you don't just practice as you learn. You also have the opportunity to, to, to earn money. <laughs> to earn money, yes. So you go through the program, you gain experience on the program, and you get paid for it. You get paid for it. So you enroll into the program, so we have different courses. We have soft engineering, we have web design and development. We have digital marketing. We have finance and accounting, audio and video editors, real estate assets management. Yes. So we still have so much more. We, we, we even have the HR. So you get enrolled into the program and um, the cost of paying for the program is also very flexible. So what is it that the market demands of us today? Trust me, we have it in the ID Global Training Center. So you come learn, get trained, learn on the job, you get the skills and then you get paid. Okay, so who wants to share? We can still share if you want to share. Okay, oh, Julia, sorry, just to add to what you have said. With the training center, you can also tell your friends and family because um, learning a skill is very paramount, especially with the advancement of what is going on in the world's economy right now. The earlier you pick up the skill, the earlier the person is able to advance in it. Forget the fact that you are being paid to learn those things or that after that you get unemployment. It's also that you get to be empowered. You are not bullied by the change in any kind of economic uh, hazard. So it's important. So you can talk to the people around you, your friends and your family. They might just be interested in taking advantage of that opportunity. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jay, for throwing more light on that. Okay, no more questions. No more. If we do not have any more questions, um, we can we can allow Juliet to go and then uh, we will also call it a day. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. We will take the opportunity to invite you. So our program tomorrow, we have the Monday vision tomorrow. The Monday vision gets to talk about the vision of ILIT Global, which is to touch the lives, transform the lives of so many people, so many people. We don't want to reframe ourselves. We want to be able to transform the world through our learning platforms. And so we would also be looking at, um, at the products that we offer. So if, um, if you would take out the time to, to be there with us tomorrow, that would be great. We will share the links on our different platforms. Thank you so much for making out the time to be here today. Do have a lovely day. And I trust, I hope that you found today's session insightful. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next month and tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Coach Marie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Wendy. Wendy, it's good to see you. Are you back in Ethiopia? Are you 
Aziza Baba. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. Thank you for uh, the session. It's a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Wasulwa. Did I say it well? Wasulwa. Oniko. Yeah. Yeah, you're joining us from where? From Congo. Um, yeah, from, uh, from Congo. Congo. Oh. From Congo, Kinshasa. Congo, Kinshasa? Very. Okay, that's lovely. Yeah. Living in German. That's a, that, that's a beautiful place. Congo looks like Lagos. Congo, uh, Kinshasa looks like small Lagos. Yeah, yeah more Lagos. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ima. <laughs> Since you were saying something, yeah, I said it was a lovely session. I won't miss the next one. Thank you for inviting oh, me. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you for being here. Yeah. How is London? Ah, London is good. London is good. Thank you cold very much. Okay. Or rainy? Is it's it just wet? cold. It's not raining. Okay. No, it's not raining. It's just cold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. Bye. Bye.